Hi guys, it's Kelly. Thank you so much for stopping by. I know it's been a while since I've had a video up. I've just been super, super busy. Anyway, so for this video, I'm going to be using Distress Paints with a jelly plate. And later on in the video, I'm going to transfer over to Distress Oxide Inks. I like to use both. This is my first time using Distress Paints on my jelly plate. And so I figured I'd give it a go. Now this case here I got, it's pretty cool. It holds, it's a jelly case holder, uh, jelly plate holder. And I bought one large one and I cut it down to be smaller so I can make smaller uh, panels if I wanted to. And this one here is brand new and that will be the one I'm using today. Now the jelly plate is really cool. It has this two plastic, plastic acetate sheets on both sides and it's about maybe a quarter inch thick and it feels like a jellyish kind of stamp and it's really cool i like the way it feels and it's super 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 sensitive and reactive to any type of pattern or uh, texture on it so that's what makes it really effective in making prints so my first print here is just um, I'm using three different colors and just kind of blending them out now I do notice that the distressed uh, uh, paints are an acrylic paint and they're very um, they're thinner than regular acrylic paints and they do beat up on the jelly plate now I don't know if you like that look or if you don't but that's the look it's going to give you and I like I kind of like that one and it has like the like I said the beating of the paint shows up um, as a textured look and I kind of like that look you know again this is my first time trying it out so I'm just going with it now what I like about the jelly plate is that you can add a stencil and you can build layers on it like this is the one I just did and then I added more and, and then I put a stencil down put my cardstock down peeled it up and put it back down and it picks up the pattern I really like that now I'm switching to oxide inks because I didn't want the, um, I wanted a smoother um, print. So I'm just adding some colors here and blending those out. And this print, I really didn't like the way it came out. <clears throat> That's okay. It's okay if you have ones that you don't like, you can always build on top of them, layer on top and just keep adding them until you're happy with the print. Or you can flip the paper over and do it do it over now this one I really like the way it came out it's it's different and with jelly prints you got to remember nothing is going to be like a perfect blend or you know you're always going to have some texture and uniqueness and that's what makes the jelly print so much fun and I'll show you in the end how I made turn these into cards now this one you can see it directly where I put the ink onto the jelly print uh, the jelly uh, gel plate and so I didn't want the ink pads to be so squared and you know the way that came out I didn't really like it so I added another print on top and this I liked I liked the way it came out I added the, the dots to it and it I really liked that that print now another thing you can do with the jelly plate which I like to do is use die cuts I use for two reasons one you get a cool look and color to the die cut and two it has a second purpose where it leaves a ghost print and I'll show you that here in a moment see you can add like a ghost print on top of a print you've already done and then you can take the die cut and lift it up and add it to that I'll show you here in a moment what I'm talking about you can remove that see it's got nice color and you can add that on top of that panel we'll make a separate card entirely with it so you'll see in the end how I turned that one into a card. Now another thing that I like about using die cuts, I'll show you here in a moment, I'm just pushing that down, not so much to add color to the back of the die cut, but to push it into the ink. See, you get a ghost outline, and then, watch, I'll show you. So you get that ghost outline, and you can add your die cut on top of that. It's like, a, it looks pretty cool, watch, I'll show you. And then all you have to do is add a sentiment or maybe an embossing folder and you got a beautiful card and it's a really cool effect. Now, another thing you can do is when you add a die cut, you can, oh wait, no, I'm not doing that yet. <laughs> I'm not doing that next. Now, at this point I said, oh no, I ruined this. I added 
the stencil pattern and it ruined my print. I was so bummed that I did that because I liked that the way it looked and I should have used a lighter ink, but I didn't. Turns out this turned out to be one of my favorite cards. You'll see in the end if you stick around. Now this one, I'm gonna show you. This is a stitched uh, die cut. It has stitching in it and I pushed it into the jelly plate and then I put my copy paper on top, pressed that in, and if you look close so you can see the stitching into the print. I think that is such a cool, cool look. And this is um, a technique you cannot get any other way. So I really wanted to show you that because I thought that was a really cool thing. Now the next thing here, I'm going back to Distress Paints again because I wanted to do a, a more abstract type of background where I'm just layering and kind of smooshing colors to get like a splattered, um, you know, just a messy look. You got to remember, if you make mistakes or you're not happy with your prints, you can always layer on top of them or use them to die cut, die cut leaves, die cut letters um, for small, maybe a heart, different elements. You can always use them for something. You can just throw distress spray paint on top of them or, you know, you can just, con you don't throw them out. You can always do something with them until you like them. Now this one uh, the is a very mixed media look. I got the two ghost uh, leaves going on there. Those are, uh, that's a leaf set from Momenta. It's a new set and I really like it. And what I was doing is just adding colors just to get kind of like a splattered look on my panel. The, the carved pumpkin here was new so I had to take off my little, uh, the little disc that comes inside. And I was making a few prints and instead of cleaning off the plate I just added more paint to it. Now Distress Paint is not permanent until it's dry. Once it's dry it's permanent. So that's a, something to keep in mind. So you gotta clean off your stencils if you're gonna use Distress Paint and your jelly plate as well before it dries. Now here are the cards I wanted to show you. I didn't, I only made a few and then the next clip you'll see the rest of my cards. Here they are. This is the one with that stitching and that ghost print and I added the uh, leaf on top and I did the little stenciling on the card base itself. The that is 100, and 100 pound Nina Desert Storm cardstock. This one was that abstract, you know, with the one I just did, the last panel prints I did, and I did an embossing folder on that and added the butterflies. Now the butterfly shadow inside the butterfly is another print that I used. Now this one is that ghost-like one that I used the two leaves on, and I just die cut that out, added a sentiment, some thread, and added some uh, stenciling to the card base itself for a little more interest. Now this guy was one of my first prints with the, remember with the uh, polka dots? The one I didn't like, oh no, that's not that, this one. This is the one that I did like with the square uh, stamp and I just, yeah, I die cut it smaller and added it to that card base. This one was the one of the first prints I made and I really like the way it came out and you just added a little sentiment there in, in gold foil. Now this is the one I said I ruined and I was like oh no. So what I did was I offset it so it was just a little bit of that darker pa pattern peeking out so it didn't overwhelm that panel. So I just offset it a little bit and actually I really liked the way this card came out. I was going to throw the panel out because I thought I ruined it but I didn't. And then this one, I love the colors in this. This is saltwater taffy and abandoned coral. And I added the leaves and I only glued them down in the center. And I added some foundry wax with this little plastic tool. I just dipped it in the wax, put it on there and just put heat to it. And that's that, added a gold uh, foil sentiment. Oh no, I think this is gold embossing. That's a gold embossing, not foiled. And those are my cards. I added some gen gems from Trinity Stamps and that's it. I made seven cards with this video but I have so many more panels that I can use. I just I didn't want to go on and on and make a million cards so I just made seven for the purpose of the video and here's some photos at the end. 
So I hope you liked it. I hope you, you know, you tr if you have a jelly plate, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Just play. Just if you're not, if you don't want to use regular cardstock, try it out with copy paper so you don't feel like you're wasting cardstock or, you know, something like that just till you get the feel of it. So thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and... And please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't done so already. And leave a comment down below for my monthly random comment giveaways. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.